Hello beautiful people! Today we're going to be solving yet another math problem with physics and we're going to bump this up to the integral and we're going to be solving this with work and torque. That rhymes. So let's first create our system here. Let's say we have a beautiful 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 red ball where under the influence of gravity has a weight of mg equals 1 and this red ball is attached to a vertical rod of one meter and this vertical rod the ball will be able to slide up and down this vertical rod without friction and this ver this vertical rod will constrain the ball so that it cannot move left or right it can only move up and down now let's say we have a one meter long spring that attaches the ball to the ceiling that is perpendicular to the rod. This string will always be one meter long. And just to show an example, in order to move the ball, let's say halfway here, the string will have to go like this. You will have to move the top of the string to a certain distance in order to move the red ball up. Now we're going to try to move this red ball from when the height is zero to the height is one meter. And to do that the rope or string must be exactly perpendicular to the rod and parallel to the surface. But to make illustrations easier, let's say that the red ball is at an arbitrary height and the orange string is, at, is attached to the ball such that the horizontal distance between the rod and the string, top of the string, is an arbitrary value x. The string is still one meter long. And we can solve for the distance between the ceiling and the ball by using Pythagorean theorem, which is just 1 minus x squared. So that's great. Now we can start solving for the work. So remember, the work is equal to the average force. The total work is equal to the average force times the distance. Now we can think about this as using our human hands, at least I hope they're human, and moving the ball up from um, when it's zero meters to when it's one meter. And that would the force necessary to do that would just be equal to the weight, mg, which is equal to one. And the distance from um, when y is equal to zero to when y is equal to one, well, one minus zero is just one. And if we plug this complicated expression into Wolfram Alpha, we'll get the stunning answer of 1. The work done by the system, as the ball moves from a height of 0 to a height of 1, is just 1. That's so simple, right? Let me just move that up here and move that away here. We'll be needing that later. Now we're going to get another definition of work, which is equal to the instantaneous, the integral from the origin, which is zero, to the final position, which is one, of the instantaneous force, dx. What is the instantaneous force, you may be asking? Well, that's just the force applied, which we can draw here. That's the force applied. That might be a bit too thick, but it's okay. And we're missing another force here, which is the force, which is the weight, which is just mg. Now, we can see there's a twisting force. There's torque in here as well, because if it wasn't for the vertical bar constraining the red ball, the red ball would, like, would want to move in the arc like that. But 
Since it's not moving in an arc like that, there must be another torque force at the top here that is balancing it. So we can write this as a balance of torques. Now, just a quick refresher. If you forgot, torque is equal to the perpendicular force times the um, radius of the lever arm. The perpendicular force is equal to the force times sine of data times r, which is equal to the force times r sine of data. And that would just be equal to the force, and r sine of theta is just the perpendicular component of r. So you can write that as f times the perpendicular component of r. And r here, the lever arm, would be our string. And we need to div um, divide this string up into perpendicular components. So we have perpendicular components here. And we already solved for those components earlier. With the Pythagorean theorem, we have x for the horizontal component and square root of 1 minus x squared for the vertical component. So we can just plug that in, x, x, oops, x, and the square root of 1 minus x squared. So we know that the torque here between x and mg is equal to the torque here between the force applied times the square root of 1 minus x squared. So let's write that down x times mg is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared, that's the second lever arm, times the force applied. And we know that mg is equal to 1 here, so that's just 1, and that's we can just cancel that out. Now let's divide both sides by the square root of 1 minus x squared, and that will give us the force applied equals x over the square root of 1 minus x squared, and we can substitute that into our original work equation here, and that will give us the work equals the integral from 0 to 1 of x over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx, and the total work done is just 1, because we calculated that earlier. And there we have it. The integral from 0 to 1 of x over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx is equal to 1. And that's the final answer. It's really simple, right? And you can technically solve this with um, the standard way by using a u substitution where u is equal to 1 minus x squared. And that is also another fabulous method, but unfortunately, my margins are too small to contain that, and I will leave it as an exercise for the viewers. Thank you, and have a nice day.